Hey there speakers, it's Tara and this week we are going to be talking about speaking programs. So understanding what type of speaker are you, what potential programs could you offer to an audience, right? And where does that fall in current demand? One of the very best things that you can do is to look on ChatGBT and put in a prompt to see what are the most in-demand speaking topics right now. So this is what meeting planners and event organizers are looking for uh, per topic and really how they're also stacked in rank of pay. This is really important. You have to know where you are in the industry as a speaker at all times, right? So the first thing that we'll see here is that artificial intelligence and machine learning, that is the highest, most in-demand speaking topic right now. If you're an AI expert, this is your time to shine. I do not see a reason why AI experts cannot be making a minimum of $250,000 per contract, per company for consulting services, right? That is the average right now. The fact of the matter is, is that globally, there are, I think, 34,000 AI consultants, 34,000 across the globe. But the demand is in the billions, right? This, the demand is huge. So think of this as a gold rush, and in a lot of ways it is, right? So there's a lot of room for speakers for uh, who are AI experts, and I strongly recommend everybody adapting uh, AI into their speaking business. This is why we provide in the speaker community free uh, pre-engineered prompts in ChatGPT, right? It's the best way to elevate your business. And if you can start learning this and teaching it to others, you can make a lot of money speaking, right? So, and this is how we go from speaker to also consultant. That's important to have that mindset as a speaker. You don't want to deliver a speech on stage and have the relationship end there. You also want to branch out to things like executive coaching or consulting, right? offering somebody a specific program that works for them based on a need. So the demand is only ever increasing with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Let's implement it into our businesses. And if we can be a solution provider for our, consult for our consulting customers, even better. So keep that in mind. That is the absolute top number one. And we see it's also paid very high, demand high, pay high. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, another one, demand high, pay high, right? So there is no reason if you are a seasoned expert and speaker on this topic that you should not be paid very well, okay? So if there is a gap and you're not being paid very well, you are frankly talking to the wrong people, the wrong businesses, and you need to aim higher, okay? Now, I also want to point out leadership and change management. This is always going to be an in-demand topic for, uh, you know, speaking engagements and workshops, right? Because we think about who our target audience is and who are they? Well, they're corporations, right? They're corporations that have teams. And whenever we have teams, we're going to need leadership change management and practices and development, right? So this is always going to be uh, an in-demand topic. So I myself consider myself to be a leadership speaker and a personal development expert. Um, so I fit into this topic. Mental health in the workplace. I also have a speaking topic that goes into mental health in the workplace. This is really important and it's based on my story as a speaker before I was a speaker, before I was an entrepreneur, right? My story. So my story uh, that prior to me becoming a full-time entrepreneur, I was stuck in a cycle of toxic workplaces, right? So I use this as a speaking topic to highlight the, uh, 
the importance to have a leadership that is, you know, emotionally intelligent, that is competent, that is personal developed themselves, right? Because uh, in order for us to leave a team of lead a team of, of many, we first have to learn lead a team of one and learn self mastery, right? So I speak on both of these things as well: sustainability, sustainability, and corporate. Uh, social responsibility. There's another highly demand speaking topic. Um, but use ChatGPT, right? And figure out what is in demand right now. Maybe maybe ask it, not for the, the most five in demand topics, maybe get a little bit more specific. Let's say you want to speak to female executives or female women's empowerment groups or whatever, type that in your prompt, right? And say something to the effect of what are the most five in-demand speaking topics for a target audience of female entrepreneurs or whatever, right? Or female empowerment groups. Insert your specific niche and target audience into the prompt. And then see what it comes back with, right? And if it gives you a vague, obscure answer like pay high, ask it how much per keynote, right? How much per workshop? What is the, the average, right? And if you can deliver above average service, then why are you seeking below average or average pay? And why are you accepting that? as a speaker, right? You have to know what the demand is, what other people are charging, and then you deliver based on that and you know position yourself accordingly. My advice is to know uh, where you stand in the marketplace and to have speaking programs that are highly relevant based on an existing need. So it's about an understanding as well, speakers, of, of understanding what type of speaker that you are. So let me share with you this book I'm reading right now. It's called Do It Speaking. By the way, I'm always reading some type of business book, and you should be too, because it makes you very savvy uh, very much savvy from just the average speaker, right? You want to know where you stand and you want to know what kind of problems you solve and who is your exact target audience so that you can position yourself accordingly because there's no reason to charge less than you deserve, right? So on page 80, it talks about three different types of speakers uh, that you could potentially be. Now, one is you solve people problems. So we talked about leadership, people development, executive uh, management, uh, you know, those type of things. Um, let's see. You solve process problems. So that would be maybe accounting, billing, uh, call centers, contracting, customer service, delivery, distribution, engineering, facility management, finance, hiring, and more. You solve profit problems. So that you cross sell, so that you upsell, so that you have new open channels, so that you can raise your prices, boost your margins, so that you sell more often, so that you sell at full price, so that you avoid discounting. So to recap, you solve people problems, you solve process problems, or profit problems. People, process, profit. One more time. People, process, profit. What type of speaker are you in? Which one of those categories, right? Which categories do you fall in as a speaker? Get defined there first. That way you can start to narrow in your efforts. And you do want to narrow this down because otherwise you'll waste a lot of time and resources on information that's ultimately not getting you closer to your goal. So people, process, 
right? Or profits. From there, I want you to get some clarity on who are the people, what are the pro processes, right? And what specifically about profits. Now, some speakers may fall into one or two categories, depending on the programs that they saw. So, for example, I have a program and a workshop that I teach corporate sales executive leadership teams, such as a sales team or marketing team, how to increase their visibility online, get in front of their target clients, right? gain respectability and authority in their niches and industries, and make their competition look irrelevant on places like LinkedIn and social media. And I do so with strategies and systems and include automation and uh, tools to use AI prompt engineering to make their jobs even simpler and much more effective while also building trust and relationships with their clients. That's a consulting level service, right? And it solves a couple problems, but one of them is a profit problem. So again, if you're thinking of a profit problem, what division of that company would I need to reach out to? So if we're solving a problem like that, I would probably need to reach out to the VPs of corporate, corporate uh, corporations, right? VPs or presidents, most likely. So why am I going to connect with anybody else on LinkedIn if that is a target audience, right? So aligning your network with your target audience and is an important first step as a speaker as well and to not just connect with anybody, right? So understanding what type of speaker you are what type of program that you could offer based on that, based on the problem of that client. And then from there, networking with those individuals in a social way on LinkedIn and posting content, relevant content about that topic, right? So figuring out these programs is an essential first step before we can become successful speakers. Because unless we have this narrowed down approach and unless we know a need and demand and unless we know that it's paid well, we're going to be wasting a lot of time, right? We also have to know where we fit into the market and to not just shoot from the hip with everything. We have to be strategic about our speaking efforts. So it's really important to think about it this way, that that strategy and that intentionality behind your speaking programs has to be backed by not your proof of concept, by some, by an existing need and demand, right? And the only way you can know that is by doing research. So for most of us, we're going to be, you know, in that leadership uh, change management kind of speaker, type of speaker. But how can you add a personalization to that? Again, it's not that may be a category, but it, the goal is not to copy somebody else's keynote. That doesn't make you a thought leader, okay? Your keynote is very much based on your lived life experiences, right? Based on your professional training or background. Based on something that you have, uh, again, experienced in your life and professional background. I'm not going to speak on anybody else and what anybody else is doing. That builds their thought leadership, not my own, right? So how can you take an existing thing that's already in demand and put your own thoughts and, you know, spin on it based on your experiences, right? And make it very intentionally intentional and add value. Now, regardless of what event you're going to apply to, I don't know if I've ever applied to an event where the uh, event organizer or meeting planner doesn't ask me for three, at least three takeaways and a short description, right, of the keynote of the workshop. You have to have some takeaways for the audience members. I'm going to show you uh, an example in my celebrity speaker kit here. Oops, my apologies, guys. Wrong window. There we go. 
Okay, so this is my celebrity speaker kit. I make it pretty obvious right there on the front things that I'm about, right? Here's a picture of me in action on the stage presenting to an audience. It demonstrates authority, right? They know what the product is going to look like when they hire the product, right? So if somebody goes to hire me to speak at a workshop or event, they know what it, I'm going to show up looking like. This is really important. If we are targeting a corporate market and audience, we are looking very professional in all of our uh, programs and photos, right? Very professional, very respectable. Again, if, you know, a few people get away with wearing jeans, <laughs> right? Or these kind of things, very few. Um, I suggest just looking as professional as you can anytime you deliver a speech because ultimately, um, as, you know, more corporate audiences are going to be paying for this than anybody else. So know your audience um, and show up as the best version of yourself, right? So leading confidently, that's pretty unique. So we know I'm a leadership speaker, right? I'm not making it mysterious. Leadership, right there, <laughs> you know? Um, and then right under my name as well, elevating businesses, brands, and leadership potential. So we talked about what are, you know, the what are the type of speaker you are? Well, I can speak on branding that elevates profits for businesses um, and also leadership potential. So it also solves human problems and growth business profit problems i.e. I'm positioning myself to demand a higher price and it starts right on the front page, right? I'm solving multiple problems for your organization and I'm seen as an authority when you go a little deeper. So the next page is a picture of me delivering a keynote to a, com uh, to a conference and I'm getting in the audience right? I'm not the type of speaker that stands on a podium. I get in the audience and you see, I've given someone my mic, right? And she's talking and everybody's interested in her and I'm okay with that, right? This shows my authenticity, my vulnerability, my ability to connect well with others. So displaying that in the form of social proof with uh, proof of concept here with your picture, with you doing the thing you say you do is very important as a speaker. Right here, what some of my clients say, right? Very positive reviews. And that's the key. As a speaker, you're always getting more reviews constantly. Reviews, 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 okay? Uh, testimonials, because it shows that proof of concept. It shows shows that you do the thing you say you do and people from all over the globe potentially or all over an industry or influential people um you know are looking to you as a leader well that again shows that proof of concept so establish yourself as an authority on every single page of your celebrity speaker kit the next page now it's time to really have you, your professional background and achievements. Right here, I have my uh, signature, my signature uh, speak, professional speaking tagline. So leadership strategies that unleash confidence. It's exciting, right? What is it? I want to learn more. Doesn't that sound exciting? So it could be leadership methods that unleash potential. Or profits. Again, what type of speaker are you? I don't know yet, right? It could be personal development strategies that boost self-esteem. That's kind of vague, but it's an example, right? I suggest going with something that's going to lead with, you know, again, a ROI of some kind, especially if you're talking to businesses, right? Know your audience and what their goals are. That will help you, um, you know, craft your signature uh, headlines and so forth. Uh, but mine is leadership strategies that unleash confidence. Confidence is my brand. It's my signature, right? It's 
after my book. And then I talk about my book in here as well, right? That I'm an international best-selling author um, of a book called How to Grasp Confidence and Own Your Power. And here are my signature programs. So in here I have How to Lead Confidently. So confidence, again, always thinking confidence as my, as my keystone, right? What I want to be known for. So I put it first, right? That's not a mistake. It's because it's my most high in-demand keynote that solves a what? A people problem, right? How to lead confidently. Elevating emotional intelligence. Again, that's a leadership. It's a people problem, right? Gratitude, resilience, and adversity. That borrows after the theme of my TEDx talk. So that's strategic as well, right? Personal brand leadership. Now we're getting into the profit uh, part of it where I help companies and sales teams and marketing teams and real estate teams uh, build an online presence that makes their competition look irrelevant and starts with that personal branding. But I also have an entire workshop that goes into that as well that can either be a in-person workshop or a virtual webinar. So again, thinking of ways to make these multi-purpose other than just a simple keynote, right? So how to lead confidently is the same way. I have an entire workshop that actually takes these principles of these two programs and combines them together into a workshop for leaders. And then each page gets their own uh, pardon me, each program gets their own full page, okay? So each program has a brief description of what the program is. Use ChatGPT to edit. Put in a prompt that is a description of this and then see what it comes back with, right? And then refine as needed. Have at least three takeaway points that the audience will learn after attending your session and do this for every single one of them. You will find as you go through your open events pages and for the open gigs pages in the community that every single event is going to ask you for these exact things right here. A description and at least three takeaway points. Now, something I want you to notice as you're going through all of those um, programs in your open events and open speaking gigs sections, that there are no such thing as a motivational speaker, that nobody is asking for a motion, motivational speaker. So this is something I would um, really think about and consider. I know so many speakers consider themselves as motivational speakers. However, I have yet to see an open conference or event that is asking for motivational speakers. Some of the reason for this is, is because people who fall into the motivational speaking category are oftentimes celebrities, right? They have agents that do, uh, that get them into the door. But for most speakers, uh, if you're starting off as a motivational speaker, it's going to be very hard for you to get categor categorized and to actually create your speaking programs because, well, Nobody is asking for motivation alone, right? And it makes sense. Motivation by itself does not make you a subject matter expert in anything. To me, that just sounds like a generalist, right? So you really have to consider that uh, when you're thinking about what type of speaker you are as well. Again, we, we're solving people process or profit problems. What does motivation have to do with that? right? So become a subject matter expert, a true subject matter expert, and don't rely on a topic just like motivation. Think about real three ways, actual three takeaways that your audience can, you know, take with them that day to transform their lives and businesses and profits and systems. And in order to do that, you have to be a true subject matter expert and authority in your field, right? And motivation does not make you a subject matter expert. 
So I encourage you all to just consider that and think about that um, as you're going through your speaking programs and developing them as well. Good idea to have a story in here that's aside from a professional bio. It's a good idea to kind of bring your humanity and uniqueness. And why would somebody hire you as opposed to anybody else? This is your time to really share your story, okay? And don't hold back. <laughs> this is why they hire you as opposed to anybody else speaking on the exact same topic as you. Your story matters. Share it. Okay, and put it in your celebrity speaker kit. Again, me, pictures of me on stage, more client testimonials, authority build. Okay, you're going to want to have a lot of authority build as well. Because if you're positioning yourself as a branded expert, a branded expert, you should have the authority to back it up, correct? So you're going to want to put these type of things in here. So these are PR features, places you've been in. If you haven't had PR features, you can put podcast logo, logos on here. You can put companies you have served on here, things like that. But you have to start gathering these third-party credibilities and um media appearances, folks, because this is huge. This is how speakers, remember when I said most celebrity speakers have agents and they kind of get called to be emotion or, um, pardon me, motivational speakers, right? And that the opportunity doesn't necessarily exist for many people to be motivational speakers, right? You have to have these third-party accreditations in here, third party uh, proof of, uh, you know, proof of performances in here, because that is what ultimately positions your brand is that subject matter expert and authority. So it is your duty as a speaker to be seen as, in as many places as possible. And that's why I really recommend podcasting as well, because it's a really good way to get started and to expand your brand, right? And to reach into other people's audiences. This is huge, guys. Forbes, again, you know, put put your absolute best things in here, right? And here, transformative impact on lives across the the globe, right? I talk about how I'm a speaker right there, author, coach, right? Shows what I do, who I serve, what I'm about, what are my morals and principles? That's important too. Degrees and credentials. So I can back up everything I say on the profit, you know, aspect because I've got an MBA with a specialization in business analytics. I have a degree from Cornell uh, or certificate from Cornell and Notre Dame. Uh, and a bachelor's degree as well, obviously, right? So I've I've done the work, I've gone to school, I've learned and continue to study and refine my craft. More testimonials on here. I mean, I, you have a lot of testimonials, guys, and it should be testimonials of you, in, you know, in different areas. Maybe you as a, you as a coach, you as a speaker, right? You as a workshop facilitator. You, you growing somebody's business, you doing the proof of concept that you say you're going to do, right? And then make it easy for them to contact you. What if they're sold, you know, before they get even to just a couple pages in <laughs> and they're like, I don't need to read all this, right? She's great. Let's hire her. Don't make it hard and impossible to find your contact information. You don't have to put this on every single page. I guess you could, but you don't have to, right? But call to action, here it is. I don't make a mystery about it. Here it is on this page as well. Again, doesn't have to necessarily be on every page, but make it, you know, literate throughout, right? Here, here is it again. And then finally, again, on the last page as well with all of my social media icons so that you know where I am, right? I'm relevant. This is important as well. Meeting planners and event organizers, ultimately, when they go to plan an event, 
Um, they need the event sold. I think everybody can agree with that and understand that. They want to sell as many tickets as possible, right? So oftentimes they want speakers to also help promote their events. Now, if you have no audience on social media, are you going to be seen as that partner that helps them solve a problem? No, right? So in order for you to do that, you have to build a social media following as well. And you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. It's called running a business. It was never supposed to be easy, right? The people who win at this game play the game every single day. And the game is repetition and consistency and getting your reps in. Folks, if you applied to 10 speaking engagements a day or get got in front of 10 networking opportunities for speaking every single day right, for 365 days a year, which is actually possible, how much more successful would you be? So you have to get the reps in. You first have to know, uh, you know, who that target market is, what kind of problem you solve, and then what problems do they have that you can help them bridge that gap with, right? And come at it with a pres prescriptive consulting level. And this is how you go from being, you know, an average speaker to a phenomenal influence and impact, solving a lot of problems for a lot of people and also making a lot of money in the same process, right? The more money that you make, the greater the impact you have. So it's really important to, you know, as you're going through your journey of professional speaking to understand that we all want to make an impact on the lives of others. We all want to change and help other people, but we also have to help ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to be financially, not just stable, right? Not just surviving. We need to be thriving so that we can help even more people solve even more problems so that they can have better qualities of lives, right? And so that their businesses can grow and be impactful and help more people. So it all starts with us and our mindset. It really, truly does. But I hope you found this video helpful um, as you're developing your speaking programs. Just remember, it's so, so key. People problems, process problems, or profit problems. Woo! <laughs> Which do you solve? Get granular on this and then start developing your four signature programs based on these things. Understanding what takeaways the audiences will get and how it will benefit their lives and impact them as well. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Always happy to discuss. Take care.